Hey, it's Dougie from Valto, and in this video, I'm going to be talking to you about SharePoint admin role and what that means. Now, hopefully, if you've used SharePoint or SharePoint Online quite a bit before, you'll have seen SharePoint permissions. Now, dead easy to access this. Click on the cog of any SharePoint site and then click on site permissions. Now, the reason it's called site permissions is because the permissions are specific to the current site. Now, this video I'm doing right now is a bit of an extension to a previous video that I did about SharePoint permissions. So I'm not going to go into major depth and detail about SharePoint permissions specifically because I've already covered that in a previous video. However, I'm going to quickly recap them just so you understand the difference between site permissions and the SharePoint admin role. So with site permissions, they are specific to a single site. So in this case, I'm on a site called The Heart, and these are the permissions for that site. For every single site, there are groups. So you've got site owners, site members, site visitors. And starting at the very bottom, the very bottom access you could have in SharePoint is essentially read, read only, essentially. So you only have access to read content, download it, open it. But you can't edit, delete, or create anything new. Then you've got site members, and at a high level, this is basically the easiest way to explain it is you're somebody who's creating content, but you're not responsible for the, the the overall site. Then you've got your site owners. These are people who are responsible for the overarching site. They are people who have responsibility for giving and removing access and over basically editing the site. And they have the full responsibility, really, of the site itself. Now, that is the SharePoint permissions. SharePoint permissions, as I say, are only relevant to one site. So you do have to set SharePoint permissions at every single site. But what about those people who are maybe in your IT department or somebody who has got the responsibility of the whole of SharePoint? Not just one or two SharePoint sites, but all of them. Now, that could be tens, hundreds, or even thousands of different SharePoint sites that they want to have access to to go in and help maintain. Um, I've worked for very large companies before, enterprise level companies where I've been the SharePoint admin so that I can go in and give access to people who maybe, maybe say for example, there's one site owner of a particular department site, they leave the organization. It's then down to somebody else to come in and then give um, a level of access to, to them, uh, to, to the new people that replace that person. So that would really be done by the SharePoint admin. So a SharePoint admin, once they've got that role, they would have access to the SharePoint admin center. But I'm going to come back and explain the SharePoint admin center um, shortly once I've explained how you can get the admin role. So the way that you actually get the admin role itself is to go to office.com, select on the admin tile on the left-hand side, and then select on users. Now, before I go any further, I should have mentioned this can only be done by somebody who has got the admin center access. Say, for example, like a global admin. So typically, your IT department would have that. Or if you're in a small organization, it's most likely the person who originally set up your Microsoft 365 tenant has got this access. So you need somebody like that who's got this access. Or maybe you've got the access um, and you just want to give someone SharePoint admin role rather than global admin. So then you go into active users and you can see all the different users you have inside of your um, active user center. Once you select a user, you can then click on the manage roles option across the top bar. Now, this is where you can then specify um, at the moment, there's no user um, admin access. We can specify admin centers and there's a whole host of them. Again, I'm not going to go through each one of them, but kind of if you imagine all the key products and areas of Microsoft 365 have their own administrator role, Exchange, for example, um, or uh, Teams uh, as another one. Now, once you select SharePoint Administrator, you can see over here, we've got this little kind of tool tip which explains what the role is. So it gives full access to SharePoint Online, uh, manages Microsoft 365 groups, as well as manages service requests and monitors service health. So they can go in, they can see the service health of SharePoint. So say, for example, this was somebody who was responsible for SharePoint. They worked on the support desk of IT support. They would be able to see the service health of 
share points. So say, for example, they got a load of inbound requests one day that something wasn't working. The first thing they would want to be able to do is go and check the service health of SharePoint to make sure that it's not something that is globally affecting or regionally affecting people uh, across multiple company tenants rather than just being something specific that's gone wrong on one SharePoint site internally. So once you've selected that role, you can click on Save Changes, and that will then apply that role to that person. So they've now got this role. Sometimes I hear people say that they've given them the role, but it still hasn't applied. But I would suggest, to be honest, they probably need to sign in and out of, a, of their browser, close all the tabs, close all the browsers, maybe even have to clear the cache if, if they needed to, um, uh, or wait a, a couple of hours. Um, and then once they do that and then log back in, they should have access. And the way... That they'll know that is because once they click on the app launcher they should see um or let's just go back to office.com and click on the app launcher they, they should see the admin tile and when they click on that and they go through to the admin centers they click on show all and then they will be able to see sharepoint as an admin center now just to quickly run you through the admin center and what that looks like um this is essentially now as as somebody with the admin role this is what I would be able to see. I'd be able to do a site search, so searching all the different SharePoint sites. I can see message center, so these are kind of uh, messages that have come through. Um, these are quite useful to keep keep track of actually, because it's almost like a little summary related to SharePoint of what is going on. So things like features being retired, new things being rolled out, things like that, um, a really good place to, to, to get information from. And then we've got, um, Oh, sorry about that. Just got an alarm going off for some reason. Um, and then we've got things like um, usage. So SharePoint uses OneDrive usage, SharePoint file activities, things like that. Now we can actually um, customize this kind of dashboard by clicking on add cards. And then um, basically I've already got all the cards added on here. But um, if I didn't, um, you can choose to add and remove different things if you if you didn't want to see them there. So if I click on show all, um, actually I've got all the options here, so I don't know why that said show all, show, show less. Um, I was expecting it to expand out a bit more. Um, but these are all the different um, areas I have access to. Again, I'm not going to go into a lot of detail about this because I do have a separate video that's called um, What is the SharePoint Admin Center? And if you watch that, you get a lot more information about um, the admin portal. But just to give you a high level of, of what this is, um, we can access all of the different SharePoint sites. So as a SharePoint admin uh, role, I can access all the different active sites. Um, as a little tip as well is if you don't already have access to one of these SharePoint sites, you can give yourself access by selecting on them, uh, then uh, clicking on membership, um, and then you can add site admins. So you can add yourself to this. So if you didn't have access to the site and you clicked on that URL, just because you're an, a SharePoint admin you have the SharePoint admin role, doesn't mean you automatically have access to all the sites. You do have to give yourself access to the site. So it means you can come and go from different sites as you need to. You can also see all deleted sites. This is a great place. So if someone's deleted something, say for example, you get an IT support ticket, say I've deleted my SharePoint site, I need it back. Um, they are retained for 93 days uh, and then they're permanently deleted. Unless you've got a backup tool, um, they are completely gone forever. So I would suggest you do have a backup tool, and if you do need a backup tool, you can get in touch with Valto because we do offer setup of backup tools, um, and we can give you a, a, a good cost for ongoing licenses for them. But they are really important that you you have something in place. So if something is deleted and it's gone past that kind of 93 day point, you can get it back. We've also got areas where we can manage policies for things like sharing. So, oops cursor of the live demonstration here go back to sharing um sharing policies related to sharepoint can we share things externally or not um within here access controls so what can we do about unmanaged devices and um idle sessions timing out and things like that we've got overarching settings of sharepoint so these are some of the kind of areas that we can change some of the core settings uh, content services are so things like term stores. Um, so if you're wanting to do things like advanced managed metadata and things like that, um, I don't know if I've got any examples in this in this test area, um, but you can see things like maybe department job titles, things like that under people. Um, to give you a bit more of a, a detailed example of how managed metadata and term stores work, 
say for example like on clothing websites where you go on and say for example i'm looking for a t-shirt on a clothing website i would go on and i would select i'm looking for uh men's clothing so that's the first kind of like um part of the, the taxonomy underneath that i'm then looking for a t-shirt so that's the next part it's the next drill down and then underneath that i'm looking for extra large t-shirts which are blue so i've gone from kind of like say if, if i didn't have any of those filters there might be say ten thousand products clothing shoes jeans tops hoodies hats things like that and it's filtered it right down now i've got my extra large blue men's t-shirt and there's only 20 of those so that's exactly how this kind of taxonomy works so you can have drill downs multiple layers of tags which you can then apply to your sharepoint documents content type libraries so i mean that's quite advanced stuff but you can then attach more content types which are essentially collections of different columns tags and things like that you can apply to documents migration so if you're looking to do a migration um, from certain areas google workspace dropbox ignite box file shares things like that this is a migration manager area um, now this isn't necessarily for the faint-hearted if you are going through a migration project and you need some help again val to here reach out to us and we can make sure that you're guided through that uh, properly then we've got different reports so data access governance and there's a few advanced areas of that api uh, things like that and then more features just essentially takes you to this page where you can see all these different bits and bobs um, laid out um, for you. There's not a huge amount necessarily on a day-to-day basis you'd be going into from here. Um, things like user profiles are good if you need to man manage those um, manually. Um, search centers, where you can help users find what they're looking for. Um, essentially, you can configure some bits and bobs and stuff in there. Um, but essentially, not much goes on in here. You tend to find a lot of the admin center. You spend most of your time in this active site area. Um, and you might need to every so often review your kind of policies and things like that so it's mostly this top third area of the admin center is what people tend to focus most of their time on so i hope you found that useful and if you did please like subscribe and if you've got any questions or thoughts or comments add them to the comments box below if you um need any help with sharepoint at all then there's a uh, contact us link below which essentially takes you to a contact page you can fill out and we've got our experts standing by that can book a uh, free consultation with you to talk about how potentially we could be helping you with your SharePoint project. Um, and as I say, do like, subscribe to the video, and keep uh, your eyes peeled for future SharePoint videos from Valto.